What's up, Maridistas? This is Kian Sabani. Hope you guys all enjoyed Real Madrid 1, Manchester City 1. First leg is out of the way. Um, I think a lot of things were answered. And uh, I got to say, for all of the fuss that was made about Manchester City, great team, don't get me wrong. No disrespect at all. But, you know, City are favored. City are going to destroy Real Madrid. One certain ex-British footballer wrote in the Times in his column, City will dominate and destroy Real Madrid. Well, turns out we've seen this movie before. Real Madrid not afraid of anyone, especially in our own stadium. I thought there were a lot of things that were encouraging we took away from that. And I came away from that game really with the realization that we just watched the two best teams in the world fight it out. It was high-level football uh, and all to play for in the second leg, which I predict will be gut wrenching and a lot of sphincters will be tight. It's gonna be it's gonna be a bloodbath. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I came away encouraged in our abilities to um to beat this team. I think we can do it. That out of the way, what you're about to listen to is from Tuesday night's post game podcast slash Zoom call that went up exclusively over on patreon.com slash managing Madrid. It was a two hour call me, Ruben Skierping, Ewan McTeer, Mehdi Hassan join at the end. Q&A at the end. Some video analysis. Raw off-the-cuff um, breakdown of that game that went up Tuesday night. Again, two hours if you want access to the whole thing. You can still access it even if you didn't join live. It's over on patreon.com slash managingmadrid. You can also click on the link directly in the show notes to the episode. Uh, so the clip I uploaded for free this time is about mostly Tony Cruz, Kamavinga, some tactical stuff. Rudiger, Carvajal versus Grealish. Uh, yeah. Enjoy it. And we'll see you. Uh, I guess we'll see you on the mailbag. Lucas and I will be doing mailbag. But again, you have to have access to Patreon for that. So see you on the mailbag. Patreon.com slash managing Madrid. Enjoy today's clip. And let's go. I always refrain from kind of commenting on the starting lineup before the game, even if I disagree with it, because I have to be open-minded that it'll work. I think one of the pleasant surprises of this was that, you know, Tony Cruz, who has gotten so much scrutiny for playing as the six, rightfully so. I mean, we've all seen the performances there defensively. I thought he, the, the, the pleasant surprise of tonight in the midfield was the fact that Cruz played the six and he was immense from a defensive perspective, tracking yes. runners into the box covered on both <laughs> flanks. He was sprinting back to track. He uh, also just a lot of crucial block crosses and shots, closing, closing attackers. And of course he, he helped escape the press too. Um, but talk to me, Ruben, about the starting lineup and also Cruz's role in it. And if there was anything that caught your eye. So what I like about this lineup is that it's very flexible. So you can start with Kroos uh, as the defensive midfielder, but if you see that this is just uh, not going to plan at all, you can shift a little bit and put Fede as the defensive midfielder, for example, and you will then sacrifice his offensive output pretty much, but um, he will do the defensive tasks uh, better probably than than Kroos. Um, you could also... Uh, go with uh, Rodrigo a little bit more centrally at times and you, you have a lot of options um, I also think um, this has been our most regular uh, starting 11 lately um, when Anstati has uh, played the most important games he's been going with Kamavinga left back and you know, all the same stuff as today so to change that up, I mean, you could go with Chiamani because you're scared of City. You could go fed right wing because you're scared of City. But I, I like this. At home, at the Bernabeu, all the factors that you mentioned, the, uh, the atmosphere, you should go for it. And I think I don't see many other changes that I would have made um, that would have, I don't know. I, I understand that people thought it was risky, but we had the opportunities to change it up if necessary. Yeah, and even I think uh, one of the things that I was kind of worried about, and we tie this into the lineup discussion, is that if you look at the key moments in the Champions League run last year, a lot of it was with the bench mob, right? You know, Kamavinga comes in, mm. changes the game. Rodrigo comes in, changes the game. Ceballos last season was key. Um, the depth kind of withered in that sense tonight because 
um, it's a good problem, but Kamavinga and Rodrigo are in the starting lineup. Mendy's uh, not 100%, so he's not playing. Militao's out. Then you also have the fact that Ceballos is injured for this game. So I was worried about the the sustainability of the way we were playing, especially in the first half the way we were chasing the game um, defensively. But I, that kind of worked itself out. Um, but did you have any other further thoughts in the starting 11? And it's not, it's not like we had the, the only real option, you know, to introduce here, I guess, is you could put Chu many there in the six, or you bring in Nacho and move Kamavinga to the DM position. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I was, uh, yeah, I was totally ahead, unsurprised but... by what we saw. And I mean, you could have written this starting lineup. Let me put it this way before the Copa del Rey final, I think this was um, all, always going to be. The, the starting lineup for the Manchester City game because, like Ruben said, this has been the lineup for the last few games. If you don't have Mondi there and you don't have any other left back, once everything shifts and you move Kamavinga there, this is the lineup. And I would have been, I would only have been surprised if it was anything other than this lineup. That doesn't mean there's concerns that people had about, like you mentioned, Cruz here, all these kind of problems. But I was, I was not surprised. Like I could have written this in any match report four hours before the game. Probably that was when they released it as well. This was not a surprising lineup, like you say. It's the it's the players coming off that you're not sh- you're not sure how that will work and who that will be. And in the end, it was you know um, you know the likes of Nacho coming on. You know the guys that <laughs> maybe doesn't make the most sane Nacho Modric, but it works. And Nacho actually comes on and and has a good stint and almost uh, puts in a couple of balls. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, they just find a way. Even and it's not necessarily just young players. It's not just your men can come off the bench. The older guys can come on too, and they can be bench mob. I think we almost thought at the end of last year, bench mob meant you had to be like under the age of twenty four, youthful, energetic, unexperienced. The Real Madrid bench mob is is the older guys too. Um, let's say if you play Chouameni and Nacho, put them into the lineup instead. How much easier would it be for City to press us and? Uh, for the goal, the city scored. I mean, it was because of a mistake um, from Kamavinga, but uh, that was uh, that, that's such an underrated point when people talk about our defensive. It's uh, we're so vulnerable defensively, but it's also about what you do with the ball. And um, when uh, we have Cross, Modric, and all of these plays, I mean, it's uh, it's a big advantage, and you should almost be as scared of what you can lose with the ball as what will happen if um, uh, if Kroos doesn't follow a run into the box or something like that. Well, when you talk about press resistancy, think about just the goal we scored. I don't yeah. like... That oh. goal doesn't happen if Nacho's at left back, with all due respect to Nacho, mm. who actually does have his moments offensively, but they're few and far between. But the way Kamavinga plays that ball, the touch from Mordic, and the way Kamavinga carries the ball, from a pure ball-carrying standpoint, there are a few better in world football than Kamavinga from any position. And so, mm. by the way, we just hit 100 people on the call. Uh, just a FYI, if you leave, it's going to be hard for you to get back in because 100 is the limit. So just an FYI, just try to try to stay connected because there's going to be a queue to get Make back it in. Sound like an exclusive nightclub, Kian. It pretty much is. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go out for a cigarette. You might, not, you might not get back in. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, right. So Kamavinga escaping yeah, pressure. That, but also, also Modric. Uh, not everyone would agree that Modric should start. He's also been out a little bit now, and you know you. You put him out of the lineup. You also don't get that amazing flick uh, for the goal. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is fun. It's funny because um, the way like Modric in this game, in terms of like talking points, I I won't put won't put him at the top of the list. But he because he was he was kind of quiet for his standards, and there was a lot of other things happening on the field that I think would take precedence in terms of the discussion. But he always has his moments in these Champions League nights. He always has at least one or two plays that completely break the opposition. Um, I actually would like to lead with Kamavinga as a discussion talking point. We kind of led with Cruz and and how he surprised us defensively at that position. This is the second game in a row. Obviously, this stems back two years. It's the second consecutive year. So going back to last year at the Bernabeu, uh, remembering the Cobra tackle he had on Bernardo Silva last year. He put Bernardo Silva into his pocket again. Um, 
Mind, mind is blown. I'm not saying Kamavinga was perfect. Clearly, he um, could have done better retaining the ball in a couple sequences, namely also on the goal we conceded to De Bruyne. But he, 1v1 versus Silva, was amazing. And um, obviously, the ball carry sequence and pass instead of Vinicius for the goal. There's so much tracking, blocking crosses, sprinting on both ends of the field, lung-bursting runs on offense. And on top of that, this is the this is the most impressive thing to me. Is it's not even just the fact that he basically um, made Bernardo Silva vanish. He was just like the Chelsea game at Stamford Bridge, on his own defensively quite a bit, on an island having to deal with that flank. Sometimes one v two. Mordic was not always there. Vinicius had a very very loose defensive assignment tonight. It was basically like, Vinny, just please make sure you have you are there for the outlet and transition. You don't need to track back as much. Just be ready when we win the ball. You have to run in transition. I thought Kamavinga was amazing. Um, I'll just also read off some quick stats. In addition to everything we saw with the eye test, he had the most touches of anyone on the team. He had three key passes, the most of anyone on the team. He had uh, five tackles, which was the most of anyone on the team. Uh, and just continues to to be decisive and assist his mandatory yellow card, which he always picks up. Tremendous game from Kamavinga. I, I thought it's important to highlight his performance. And all of this from what is not his position. It's it, not his yeah, position, and, but when you do the FIFA Team of the Year, is is he the is he the left back from this season? <laughs> you know, like because if you're including World Cup as well, where it kind of all started, he could be the best left back without being uh, a left back, which is quite crazy to think. I mean, that's if you discuss it on merit. These things it just becomes who uh, who wins the Champions League, which very much could be Real Madrid anyway. So, um, but yeah, that's that's this that's the thing we have to remember. That's not his position, and just. Um, he was incredible. Just want to mention what Ancelotti said in the pre-match uh, press conference yesterday where he was talking a bit about Camavinga's position. He said, you know, when we don't have the ball, he's a left-back. When we do have the ball, he's not a left-back anymore. And I think Camavinga listened to that and took that absolutely to heart for the goal. <laughs> Real Madrid win back possession and he's, I'm not a left-back anymore. <laughs> and he is just, <laughs> I don't know what position he thought he was, maybe centre-forward. But he just sprints, breaks, picks up the pass from Modric. And you almost look at Vinicius. There's a point, and we'll see it, I think, if you find the clips later again. Vinicius almost wants to come outside and go wide and just sees, oh, wait, Camavinga is going so direct, so beeline to the goal. And Vinicius kind of changed and curves his run a little bit because he's surprised by just how far forward Camavinga is getting in that moment. And... Um, yeah, to be able to basically play multiple positions, because that's kind of what he's doing right now. He's an extra midfielder in possession and a left back out of it. It's um you're right, we should lead with, we should lead with that. This is well, this is almost a terrible thing to happen to me because I know that he's not gonna play here for the rest of his career, but I'm always going I think I'm always now going to look back at remember when he played left back, he was unbelievable. What are the chances of us finding a better left back than this? That's a good question. Well, I I don't know. Like you say that we'll never see this again. I <laughs> he's just been too good at this position. Um, yeah, we got Fran Garcia coming next season, provided he's not flipped and sold. He's going to come in, and um, and between him and Mendy, assuming Mendy stays healthy, although that's asking a lot because I don't remember the last time Mendy was actually healthy consistently. Uh, we have left back options next season that we didn't necessarily have this season. So I, I'll be interested to see how much he plays and if the arrival of Bellingham and if he does arrive, how much that affects everything. But, you know, we can bring forward that discussion. But the bottom line is he's been really good, not as like an emergency makeshift left back, but actually as a left back. And uh, it's funny because when Nacho camp comes in, in the second half, what naturally happens is that Nacho goes to left back because he comes in from Modric and then Kamavinga shifts to central midfield. But then Nacho's just like playing left back still. And then and there was a sequence where Nacho like runs back. He's like, hey, you're midfield now. He, he tells him to go forward. And now he's like almost habitualized as a left back. 
Um, so I, I don't know how much we see it uh, next season, Ruben, but I, I don't, I'd be very surprised if this was, if this season was the, the closure of the chapter of Kamavinga left back. And if it was, what a ride it was. <laughs> I will, I yeah, will tell my it's, grandkids it's about it. It's just that it's, <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's just that he's saying that he doesn't want to play there. And I'm wondering how much does footballers, how much do footballers really care about uh, these things? I mean, they prefer to play in certain positions, I guess, but does Kamavinga really go up to Ancelotti and say, I refuse to play there? For sure not. So I guess we can see him play there more. And I, I hope so. And um, now, yeah, um, let's not talk too much long term, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very excited of what I'm seeing from him. And remember from the start of the season, there were a few issues. Backup striker, right back, maybe right wing, left back. Um, and now right wing covered, left wing covered. I mean, just because of a few adjustments in, within our squad. So that's great. Well, this goes back to sometimes I think we don't we we sometimes we're so ingrained and stuck in our ways about positions, whereas it's a lot a lot of modern football is about roles, not positions. So yeah. like Rodrigo is on a pure right winger, but he's devastating as the third attacker, roaming around and helping in transition and working hard defensively. You don't need pure symmetry, and also with Kamavinga, he can affect the game. Uh, from multiple positions because it's what he brings to the table as a ball carrier, as a ball winner. Um, he can do a lot of that stuff from both left back and center mid. Okay, I think we've exhausted that one. Let's talk about, um, I suppose, how you felt you in watching the first half. Did you feel like with City's press, and it was quite aggressive. I mean, the first play of the game, within seconds, they kick it long just so they can win the ball high up the pitch. And a lot of the story of the first half in particular was about how well we can escape pressure and get into City's half. And it turns out it was few and far between, but at least we remained in control. Uh, oh, actually, no. Sorry, you finish your thought. Yeah, go ahead. You are about to say something. No, no, I thought you were asking me that. Um, no, just the first, the first half of the first half uh, is, I think, the way to break it down. And you can tell because that's 23 minutes the Bernabeu kind of goes a bit crazy. You hear the whistles. It's so loud. I think that's partly to put City off and partly a bit of frustration and nerves of, oh no, do we have do we have 70 more minutes of of this? Um, but that's why the, the most important thing defensively was the goal. It came at the right moment to just change the entire game. And after the goal, City became sloppy. City made mistakes and the entire game changes. From the goal, I don't know if Vinicius doesn't score in that moment how this plan was going to go because City usually find a way, um, they usually work it out. But the goal came at the right time to to just shake up everything and restart. Well, I think it an, another underrated part of this, and and part of the reason why we were able to weather the storm one is because um, we just kept our heads in it and didn't panic. Uh, Benzema, who had a poor game overall, uh, I think just to discuss the standards that he has, I mean, it's a lot different than any average striker. We hold Benzema to really high, high standard, right? So he didn't score today, didn't have an assist. Um, he had that one far post setter. Another chance in the first half where Fede drives the ball forward, pings it into the box, and Benzema tries to control it, but he has a handball. Um, one thing that I think he did do really well was in the first half in particular, it was him dropping deep helped us escape pressure. His hold-up play was really good. And uh, he was able to just drop deep, make sure we hold position, and wait for people to join the attack. I think that's something he did well. But one of the more underrated, I don't even know if it's underrated. I'm sure people are talking about this. I haven't seen it because I haven't just been living under a rock after the game. Rudiger. This was, I said it before the game. This is a massive, massive, massive Rudiger game. It's so important. We like right or wrong, he has to. We have to look at him to step up in a moment like this. Militao out, our best defender of the season out. Alaba not a hundred percent, maybe. Although Alaba was heroic tonight. Rudiger was amazing. Just putting a body on Holland, make sure he making sure he has no space. Some really key interceptions in this game. Was this his best game in a Real Madrid shirt? 
if it was, it was at the perfect moment because, as he said, we needed this. And uh, he's also a player who loves these battles, I think. And I don't think he's scared of Holland at all. I think he he loves these battles, and you could see. I don't know if you saw it, but they were like smiling at each other at, at each other at one point during the game. They were just enjoying it, the both of them. So, um, I just uh, I just think this was a great game for him, and the um, thing that this is our third center back that's uh, that's uh, just fantastic. And um, I, I mentioned it: the absence of Militao could have been brutal, but he really did it so well, and. Uh, he, he does well in most aspects of the game. He's not a liability on the ball. He's great uh, in the air. I mean, he's he's pretty fast. And um, yeah, I don't have much to complain about him today at all. He loves these games, and, and you make the point that they were smiling throughout. And from the first minute as well, I think it was even thrown that long ball uh, you already mentioned in the first minute. And obviously, as the ball's coming down, they have it coming together. And that was the first time you saw them just, you know, uh, squaring up to each other and it's, you know, okay, let's do this for 90 minutes and, you know, the whole way till the, the final, final whistle at the at the eighty had, he hopes. And um, I think he really put in an addition today to to start the second leg, whether that's for uh, Millie Bar Ali Tao. Uh, I just mixed him up there. Millie, Millie Tao <laughs> or Alaba. <laughs> Maybe that's what Ancelotti should do, just scribble it enough and he gets to play all three. Uh, yes. Whether it's for Millie Tao or Alaba, I think it's Alaba that would be the one to, to drop out there, which would be harsh on him for sure. But I think Rudiger put in quite an addition there to 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 make a case for the second leg. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like it's no, certainly like, the Alaba left back option, but yeah, mm. yeah. Certainly, if uh, you know, if there was a better Rudiger game, like theoretically, this one would still be at the top of the list because of what was at stake. Uh, and and the, who we were playing, it was Erling Holland, biggest game of the season so far. Uh, just was amazing. I mean, one the my the favorite thing that I was looking at when we signed Rudiger, beyond a lot of the the important stuff like his progressive passing at Chelsea, which was elite, his ball progression, which was elite, all that stuff. What I was like most excited for was just the quote unquote dog in him. You know, the fact that he's intimidating. Uh, I I also loved his performance versus us, uh, marking Benzema in last season's Champions League. Uh, he did have a slip which led to a Benzema goal, but that was it. He uh, scored as well. He did, yeah. Um, I was excited to sign that version of Rudiger, and I I thought I just loved the way he just was not intimidated at all by Holland tonight. That's the Rudiger that I was waiting for all this time. It, it was this one. Um, yeah, and you and you mentioned like kind of the smiles and the respect between two. It was nice to see just like after the final whistle, everyone just respected each other. Um, you know, even Kyle Walker going over to Vinny, high fives and smiles and hugs, respecting what he did despite almost getting um, put into a complete highlight reel eternally with a rainbow flick over his head. That oh. that was an outrageous attempt from Vinny in, in a tight space on the on the on the sideline. Yeah, I think everyone, what everyone about, apart uh, from Carvajal what, and Jack Grealish. Yeah, yeah, I, I those was going to say, I, yeah, I, those saw, were... I saw pretty much everybody um, shaking hands. You know, they were going around for a while. I didn't see Carvajal and Grealish. I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll see that one. But um, I, maybe that's where we, we, we move next. We've done Camavinga, but if you look at the other fullback, that was equally efficient, but in the most different way. Obviously, Carvajal and Camavinga, completely different players. But he shut down Grealish in a way I think no one was expecting. He, ma- I mean, Grealish is so physical, so strong, so young, in such good form as well. Carvajal is right now m- not these things. Uh, and he matched the physicality. The push on the advertising board and the play acting afterwards was not Carvajal's best moment. He knows that. But that kind of summed up what Carvajal's approach to this game was going to be was... I'm going to push him back as much as he pushes me. And he did. And, um, you know, he had a very uh, efficient performance like Kamavinga did, but just from the most different way possible that you could play the fullback position. He he actually had a few involvements offensively as well. For example, I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember this, but I think there was one situation where he was, was all over to the left, combining with Benzema and Rodrigo, and uh, somehow he, he found himself there. But... I just have to laugh a bit at Carvajal. The fact that he can just turn turn it on in these games, um, 
I don't know sure if that's it's more about him as a big game player or uh, what he does in other games. But uh, yeah, another good game from him, and uh, he is he is reliable in these big games. So uh, just uh, just very good to see because that could have been an ugly battle with Carl Hall as at its worst at his worst against Grealish. Well, you know, I'm happy. To, I'm really happy to be wrong about anything that benefits Real Madrid. And a couple of things that I was really wrong about heading into this one was that I. I was really worried that Grealish would just beat Carvajal the way um, anyone on Chelsea or Liverpool couldn't. So that was one. And Carvajal proved me wrong on that. The other one was Cruz as the six. I was also wrong about that heading into this game. Um, I, I also, you know, the first half was a lot about Carvajal just getting the better of Grealish 1v1. And then the second half, I just lost count on how many times either him or Fede on that right wing intercepted the pass that was going to Grealish or just took the ball from Grealish, um, which, was, which was really interesting because the first half and the second half were such a stark contrast of, of how the game went. The first half, it was just efficient. Vinicius's shot and goal was the only shot that Real Madrid had in that first half. Second half, 12 shots. Um, they by the end of it, they had a higher XG than City, although both were, were both were under one. A lot of this game was just chaotic and not many clear cut chances. A lot of teams just winning the ball off of each other, going back and forth. Courtois and Ederson coming up with pretty big saves, but that second half was night and day different 